Over the last year, I've reviewed countless NFT project websites, and most of them are missing the most important piece of information that we need as investors to make a decision to invest in them. It's super frustrating. So to be able to make good investments, it's important to learn to tease out that critical factor, even when it's well hidden. Keep watching to find out how I do it. Hi everyone, my name is Daniel Tenner, aka Swambat, and in these videos I use my 15 years of experience as a successful entrepreneur working with hundreds of tech startup founders to bring some clarity to Web3 and NFTs so we can all make better investment decisions. When we invest in traditional startups instead of NFTs, there is at least one question that doesn't need to be asked. And that's how will the value of my shares increase? This is pretty standard by now. Startups sell shares to investors. Then when the startup finally gets to a liquidity event like an IPO or an acquisition, the investors sell some or all of their shares, hopefully at a profit. The shares represent legal ownership of the business and usually provide utility in the form of dividends paid from the profits of the successful business. That's customer money, by the way, not investor money. And they provide some control over the business's decision. So they're worth something to later buyers, whether that's ownership or a share of profit. Profits. When it comes to NFTs though, very few projects actually define what will make the NFT valuable. When things are left vague, people, especially those who haven't been burned by bad real-life contract terms before, tend to assume whatever they want to believe. Savvier people know that if it's not written down and legally enforceable, it's probably not reliable, especially when there's competing interests like multiple parties trying to get a slice of the pie. You might think the pie can get big enough that everyone is happy, but that's almost never the case. Go rewatch the social network for a refresher. This is true with NFTs too. Many people seem to assume that being an NFT holder gives them some sort of ownership of the project, but it doesn't. Not really. The projects themselves encourage that since they want to keep up the pretense that the NFT has some sort of value so that the floor price doesn't collapse. Now, it's fair to say that NFT holders are usually way more involved and connected to the founders of a project than your typical investor is to the founders they invest in. But that doesn't actually mean they own anything of value. After all, early employees of a startup are also closely connected to the founders, but they do receive actual shares with legal protections. Well, some of them do. NFTs are not shares. They don't entitle holders to ownership of the business, which has its own structure, usually as some sort of limited company. Many, especially the most high profile NFTs, don't actually entitle holders to anything at all. Any perception that NFTs are like shares is currently entirely dependent on the goodwill of the actual shareholders of the business. In the case of high profile projects, those are mostly the founders, perhaps some of their staff, and often some VCs who, as we all know, are warm hearted, altruistic organizations that love to share their alpha with everyone. That doesn't mean that all NFTs are worthless, but it does mean that this is the most important thing to look for if you want the NFT to be worth anything in the long run. Of course, in the short run, a project can pump because people are speculating on it. If you're a good trader, you can make a profit trading hot garbage. But if you want to do good long-term investments, you have to buy actual long-term value. So let's say you have an NFT project and you're trying to figure out what they'll be worth. The first thing to do is of course, identify what is the valuable thing that they're building. As I keep saying, look for the product. What will someone be willing to pay for, not as an investment, but to make use of it? If there is no product at all, then the answer is easy. There can be no link with nothing. Let's try a simple positive example to illustrate a clear value link. If an up and coming software developer decided to take on Adobe and use NFTs to fundraise, they might sell tokens for say about $500 per token, which might give lifetime access to their entire product suite. Given that a full Adobe Creative Cloud subscription costs about 50 bucks a month per seat, that's not entirely unreasonable. Our example company starts off with just NFT users in a closed alpha, but they execute hard and fast and soon they switch on the monthly subscription model to acquire more users. Since it's still early, they charge only $5 a month. At this stage, the NFT token might seem overpriced. After all, the mint price could have paid for 100 months of subscription. But that's okay, as long as the company keeps building. Investments are supposed to be long-term after all. So the company keeps working, they add more features and products, and the price goes up to $10 a month then $20 a month. Maybe they create an extra premium tier with extra features that cost $40 a month. Each time the company builds more valuable functionality, the intrinsic value of the NFTs they sold will go up because it saves the buyer even more money. That happens whether or not the company feels generous with its holders. So long as they honor the original agreement to provide lifetime access, the value of the NFTs goes up. If the company succeeds in building a product suite comparable to Adobe's, chances are a token that gives lifetime access to their products will be worth a whole lot more than $500. So the investment is repaid with some gain. Now, this was an example of a really clear, concrete link, but in many cases, the link is much more vague, but we can still tease it out. 
So let's take the classic pitch of we're building a global IP brand. It's quite common amongst NFT projects, though I like to beat up on it quite often because I think it's pretty implausible. A global IP brand still has a potential customer. It's still a product. But who's the customer? The people buying the hoodies? The people reading the comic book? Nope. So who is going to pay for that brand? Well, this actually seems quite close to a traditional startup play. Maybe this project will build a brand and then sell it to some mega corporation like Disney. It's an acquisition play. Now let's say they succeed. The truth is the product was in fact the company. The first real customer was Disney, who paid for the brand to make use of it as some new franchise they can run into the ground over the next few years. The next question is, why does that lead to an increase in the value of the NFTs? What is the mechanic that means that now that Disney owns the brand, instead of its founders, employees, advisors and investors, now the NFTs are worth more? Because remember, they're not buying the NFTs, they're buying the shares. Well, now that they'll be a part of Disney, everyone will know about them and love them even more, and so the price will go up and... Well... Yeah, maybe if Disney buys a brand and it becomes a major franchise like Star Wars or Marvel, and people get as emotionally attached to that as they are to other such franchises, then sometime in the distant future, some people will be treasuring those collector items like they do action figures in their original packaging. That's pretty far from now though, and pretty damn uncertain. There are a lot of entertainment brands which did all right in the 80s and 90s, but who whose collector items aren't worth that much today, even if they have some niche value. Collector items usually get their value with time, and that time is measured in decades or centuries, or even millennia, not in years or months. As far as I can tell, this is the real value pitch of owning one of those global IP brand projects. It's pretty vague, it's hard to explain to outsiders, it's decades in the future, and it plays on nostalgia and grandiose expectations. Rather too much for me. But at least it is a form of potential value, I'll give it that. There is a possible link between the business success of a global IP project and the value of its NFTs. And importantly, that value is there whether or not Disney or the project decides to be very generous and airdrop some free money to all their holders. It's intrinsic to the design of the NFT as a collectible. Whether you want to invest in that link is up to you, but at least now you know what the long-term driver of value is. Sometimes though, it doesn't matter how hard I try, I still can't quite figure out what the product is or how the NFT is linked to it. Now, you might say it's because I'm not smart enough or maybe I'm just missing some critical information, but the reality is, from my point of view, that makes no difference. If the project is so bad at conveying what their product is and how the NFT might go up in value when it succeeds as a business that I can't figure it out, that means that either this project is really bad at communicating or that there is no link between the NFTs and the product or even no product. My humble suggestion is, if you're trying to invest for the long term and you can't figure out the value link, give it a pass and wait for a project that's able to better explain how the NFT will accrue value over time. You should likely do the same if you discover that the project has fallen into one or more of the three traps that I highlight in this video, which affect most of the high profile NFT projects out there, by the way. So you definitely want to know about this. That's it for today. GM and good luck.